Hello and welcome back to Small Room Audio. It's been a while, hasn't it? For that, I apologise. However, we are back with a bang because today we're going to talk about my favourite pair of bookshelf speakers. I, I don't want to use the word best because when we're talking about quite expensive speakers, it is all subjective. They're all pretty good at a certain price point and it's about what you like. However, I believe a lot of you would like this pair of speakers because they're so well-rounded and they're so good in so many ways. What are we talking about? Of course, it is the Dynaudio Heritage Specials. They are five and a half thousand pounds here in the UK and they're limited to two and a half thousand pairs. So what are you getting for your money? And it's quite a lot of money, so you should expect a lot. Well, let's have a look at it. You get the latest Dyne Audio Silk Dome Tweeter, the Esotar 3. You also get the uh, mid bass woofer from their flagship series. It is six and a half inches and it is very nice indeed. The veneer for this in the cabinet is a walnut veneer. I don't think the video can really do it justice, but it does look and feel very nice and high quality. On the back, we've got a huge base port, but that isn't saying this is a speaker that's full of tons of massive lumpy bass. In fact, we'll get to that later. It's actually quite the opposite, but it is a massive stick your hand in it if you like to um, hole in the back of the speaker. Below that, you do have some of the nicest binding posts I've ever seen, and it's very nicely finished all the way around. 11 kilograms for the weight, and this speaker comes in with a sensitivity of 85 dB, so they're not very sensitive. You will need a fair bit of amplification to get them singing. I'd recommend at least 50 watts. I did try uh, 20 watts and a set amp with them, but that isn't really enough to get Dyne Audio speakers going. You would need at least 50, and we also tried it with a Class D amplifier putting out 180 watts. So you need a bit of power and you get a slightly different sound signature depending on what you use. So crucially, what do they sound like? Let's go from the top to the bottom, starting first with their Esotar 3 tweeter. It's a silk dome tweeter and it does have that sense of silky smoothness, but that doesn't mean to say it's not resolving. In fact, it's extremely resolving as a tweeter. You get all the detail, all of that sense of air, all of the sense of the room in which something was recorded in. It images amazingly well with pinpoint accuracy. You do tell the difference between really good recordings and those that aren't so well recorded, but I think with a good front end, you're not really going to have your ears pierced like some other tweeters out there. This one remains relatively calm and in control at all times, but it's got that balance between res resolving ability and just a really nice, smooth, organic presentation. Moving down then to the mid-range that you get out of this woofer. It is slightly vocally forward, but that's quite nice. It brings the, speak, uh, the vocalist into the room with this speaker. It, it makes it very real, very palpable, and I really enjoyed it. In fact, I enjoyed it so much that I would say that the mid-range here is only second to that that I've heard Harbeth produce, and that really is a fantastic testament to the quality of the mid-range on offer. It's so real. Voices just are beautifully delivered. It, 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 it maybe adds a tinge of warmth to a voice, but not a lot. It's just, it's just lovely to listen to. For me, the mid-range here is the main reason why I value this speaker over others, uh, because unlike the Harbeth, you've also got an incredible speed in the bass, which we'll come to now. So, Speed versus depth and impact, I guess, is what we're talking about with the bass. This is all about speed. There's a lot of texture. There's a lot of um, kind of ability to stop and start with the mid bass woofer. It's incredibly fast, as fast as maybe uh, my Clips Cornwall speaker, which has a very big 12 inch uh, woofer on it, but it, that stops and starts very quickly as well. It doesn't have huge impact. It doesn't have that kind of slam factor. If you want more bass depth and you want more slam, you will have to add a subwoofer to these uh, Heritage Specials. However, amplification also plays a part as well. With my tube amplifier, uh, it, it does give a nice bass, but it isn't as fast as it can be, and it doesn't have as much impact as perhaps using a Class D amplifier. When I hook this up to the NAD C298, Wow, okay, it did have a lot more impact, but more than anything, the speed just got faster. It got that stop-start nature. Again, it was so, so fast, 
and it was incredibly exciting to listen to. So that gives you a flavour of the sound. It is an incredibly well-balanced speaker. There's no obvious weakness. Maybe that impact and depth to the bass would be the area of, of weakness for some people. And also, in this class, its imaging and sound stage is very good, but you can get better elsewhere. Indeed, dynamics, that's very good with the right amplification, but it's not very sensitive as a speaker, so therefore you've got to have at least 50 watts to get it going. So that, again, could be an area of weakness. But I like it for its rounded out presentation, good across the board. So let's talk about comparisons in a bit more depth. I'll talk about four speakers that I've had in my room that I've owned alongside these, which I own, none of these are review samples, to give you a feel for perhaps how the other speakers are different in their presentations. The first is the Bowles and Wilkins 805D3. D3, not the new D4s. With the D3, you get more airiness, even more resolution and detail out of that diamond tweeter compared to the Dino Audio Heritage Special. But not tons and tons of detail more. That, that sort of SR3 difference to the uh, diamond tweeter you get in the, the Bowles and Wilkins, there's a small integer between the two. In terms of the mid-range, I prefer the mid-range on the Dyn Audios. The Continuum driver in the Bowles and Wilkins is very, very good. Again, it is fast for bass, but it just doesn't quite have the mid-range magic of the Dyn Audio. Moving on to the next speaker, the Sonos Faber Electra Amateur 3s or 2s. 3s, 3s, Electra Amateur 3s. These speakers are almost twice as expensive as the Dyn Audio Heritage Special. Now, they're almost in a different class, but in some ways they're not as good as the Heritage Special. What you get with the Sonos Faber is an incredible finish and build quality. It's got a marble base, it weighs a ton, it's got its own specially designed speaker stand with a marble base. They look fantastic. The finish is artisan, Italian, stylish, fantastically, beautifully, wonderfully finished, okay? You don't get that on the Dyn Audio. You also have a tweeter and an overall presentation, in fact, on the Sonos Faber, which is a bit like a smile. It's, it's kind of slightly recessed in the mid-range, tipped up in the bass, and also in the treble, which isn't what you normally get with this Italian mark. Now, the problem with this speaker and the beauty of it are kind of going hand in hand. You get the, the treble, which is slightly fierce in a small room if you're close to it. You need a little bit more distance with the Electra Amateur 3 than you do with the Dyn Audio Heritage Special. So it's not really something I would recommend in uh, midfield or near field. However, the imaging on the Electro Amateur 3 is better than that of the Dyn Audio. It is probably some of the best imaging I've ever heard. It is insane if you get a chance to listen to those speakers. And again, the bass on them, similarly, they have this huge bass port in the back, but the bass impact is much greater than the special uh, from the Heritage Specials. So it depends what you value. If you value mid-range and you value speed, Heritage Specials, if you're thinking, okay, soundstage, imaging, don't mind if the treble's a bit tipped up and perhaps a bit harsher in that sort of small room environment or if you're closer to your speakers, and if you want real impact, real impact from a uh, bookshelf speaker, the Elect Amateur does win out. But do remember, you're almost paying twice as much for that speaker. And finally, let's talk a little bit about the Klipsch uh, Cornwalls. I know this isn't a bookshelf speaker, but it is in the similar sort of price range to the Heritage Special. And again, you know, if you get a chance to listen to any of these, it's horses for courses, it's very subjective. They're all really good speakers. For the Klipsch, it's completely the opposite, right? So the refinement isn't there that you get with the Heritage Special, but you get scale, you get dynamics, you get something that can be driven by any amplifier out there, and you get ultimate fun and that sense of live essence that I don't think you can really recreate from any other speaker. However, it is not very practical for a small room, as I've proved in some of my other videos. Um, tonally, it's lovely. Imaging isn't so good on the uh, Clips Cornwalls and, of course, soundstage tends to be a little bit flat. So, again, depends what you want, but if you like a rock and roller, go for the Clips and then you will be very happy. So, to summarise then, why is it the Dyn Audio are so special? It's because they're so well-rounded. That Esatar tweeter has resolution in spades, but it isn't tipped up to get there. It doesn't have any harshness. It images wonderfully, has a great sense of air and soundstage. 
Then we have the bass, very quick, tons of texture, tons of detail in the bass that you probably didn't know was there with other speakers. But you can also add to the weight and the depth with a subwoofer if required. And then finally, that mid-range, such sweetness, such realism. It really is second only to Harbour speakers that I've heard in my room. A very well-rounded, very, very good bookshelf speaker that's limited edition. And if you get a chance to listen to it, please do. You might love it as much as I do. Anyway, I think that concludes our review. Please do like and subscribe and we'll see you back here very soon. <laughs>